Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we are taking a look at the magnificent, brilliant AU Gen X from AU DSP. Uh, this is awesome, originally designed as a piece of test equipment, so it will work as test equipment. In fact, this is an impulse response, that's all it does. And it's for testing reverbs and stuff like that. However, as you just seen, we can set this thing up to do all sorts of cool stuff, which we will do. So this was just one instance. I had Rosetta LFO controlling a couple of the parameters. Um, I'll show you how to set all that up as well. So we'll like kind of run through this thing from scratch. At the moment, it used to be really expensive. I think at the moment it's like $9.99. So it's really well worth it. Uh, I'll give you another example of the kind of cool stuff you see. So this was one AUD, uh, AU Gen X going into black hole and a couple of the parameters being controlled by um, um, Rosetta LFO. If we stop the transport, of course, Rosetta LFO stops working. So we can we can actually play it it's really cool the brilliance of it is it's all done in frequencies so the cool thing to do is do what i've done get yourself a note one of these note to frequency charts off the internet which basically tells you the frequency of all the notes and this one tells you the frequency of the notes and the octaves as well although you're just dividing and multiplying to change the octave time so you can have a lot of fun tuning this stuff up. So here's another example. So I'm just going to save this session. And then we'll, I'll play this other example. And then I'll I'll open a blank one. And we'll just have a, a good mess around with the actual app. And set some new stuff up. And I'll show you some cool stuff you can do by tuning it. And things like this. So the other one I did was this one. Uh, which was the first one I, did, I set up today. Which uses five of these. And at the moment, they're going through various effects. There is no Rosetta LFO on any of these. So this is kind of just everything doing it itself. Now, it does sync tempo to the uh, to AUM. And I guess you could have it start all simultaneously. But really, it's more fun if you just let it free ride. So here's this, this first one here. <laughs> And it's running at 22, 220 hertz. It's going from 220 hertz to 880 hertz. And 220 hertz just happens to be uh, A, uh, an octave down from the middle, uh, 440, obviously. So it's going from A to A, a couple of octaves up. So it's traveling over the one octave here, uh, two, oct two or three octaves, two octaves. And here's the speed. And it, it goes up to 104 seconds of rise time. Which is just awesome. So we'll leave it at that. This is going in the opposite direction. So that's going through black hole. This is going through bleach shimmer. And that one is a C. So it's going from a 261.64 which is, I think, like kind of middle C, and it's just dropping down an octave uh, over the course of 10 seconds. So, sorry, we don't need that on, it's no LFO. Of course, we mix it in with the other one. And I basically built an A minor.
a C? Or is it an A? I'm not sure. This is an A. This is an 880, which is an A. So if we put this in, we can drop this an octave just by doing this, so. And it's going through least delay. And also I have the noise oscillator running very very slowly with pink noise here which kind of sounds like ocean waves it's really nice but we can It's modulation is insane. Let's drop it down an octave to two octaves, one sixty four point eight two. Let's go down another octave, shall we? So this is an A, 82.41. We can reverse the direction.
taken 20 seconds to go from top, top to bottom. And of course, we can modulate any of this with a with an LFO. I'll show you how to do that in the next when we set up one from blank. Oh, let's do this. Let's have a random. It's very crelly. It's great. Oh. Now, if we have this, we can time it to be in time. We can set up the sec. So, like, for instance, if it was just one second. We switch our metronome on. So if we work out the seconds and the timing, just it's really easy. Or we can sync it. We see it's on like five seconds now. modulate that as well anyway you get the idea we'll set one up from blank and then i'll take you through the actual app because otherwise things like this they get a little bit confusing and then you think well what does this do why does this do that blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> save this one always save always save and um, we'll create uh where's me new i'll oh, clear clear will give me a new one when myself and then th this time i will start opening with a midi so i can use a rosetta lfo and then we'll just open one instance of AUGENX. I will open audio unit extension of a, <clears throat> uh, we'll start with a black hole. I'll take it out for now though, um, because adding effects to this, this is what makes it cool beans. This is what makes it sound epic stuff. So first of all, we can open our, our um, what's it as well? Cause I find um, Rosetta, excuse me, Rosetta LFO. I don't need to worry about all I need to do basically is set up um oops no set up AU Gen X here tap tap the bottom bit tap this bit here and then use Rosetta LFO as the MIDI source for that so when we do start setting stuff up and all you need to do is remember the numbers first one is 13 you can change the numbers of course first one is control change 13 then 15 then 17 this is for later we know what what that is for that to work aum's transport has to be running so there's the thing so let's have a look at the interface going okay so this is your default interface here this is your noise section you have white and pink and this is your oscillator section and it defaults to 440 which is a okay so first thing you can pan left and right Let's tap or tap yeah double tap here's your volume this is your like phase which you can also modulate then you have different waveforms And you can see it at it's like adding harmonics. And then this this bit control just changes the actual frequency. And 
and you can reset it. So if you've got a frequency chart, it's brilliant. You can basically start off by just saying, all right, everything's going to be in um, this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at 220, which is an, exactly an octave below. Or you can dial it in, but it's really difficult to dial it in, actually. So um, I'm going to leave the phase about there. So this one here, if we go back to our second, our first little thing, this is a uh, part of where you can actually get the thing. So you'll see at the moment it's going from 220 up an octave to eight, up two octaves to 880. And it's doing it over the course of one second, but we can have this run over uh, 104 seconds which is awesome so let's go back to one second shall we okay so let's if if we open another one now like this and go uh, with our god dog what are you doing oh right, here we go au gen x i just want to show you quickly that if we go to our first section again here where we've got our ability to have it if we set this now to so we've got a on the first one if we set this one to now say an e we'll have an a5 so if we go let me just find a e on my chart i'm going to go from uh 329.64 which is e uh three 29.64 that's e up to two octaves above that which is e 329.64 well go one octave above or two which is 13 13 1318.56 so we've got 13 uh 1318.56 13 18.5 Six. Okay, so that's going to track an, an, uh, two octaves. I'll change it to a square wave and then pulse modulate. So if I start this off now and then bring in this one. You can see it's very cool. Where it gets really cool is if we slow them both down at different speeds, right? And if you're really clever, you could probably start to build up some type of... Well, I've got one really slow like that. You could probably start to build up things like shepherd tones and stuff like this. So we'll start this one off. And then start this one off now. So that's very cool so by blending blending them together you can get some really interesting effects okay so we just looked at this section where you can get it to go up and down if we speed it up again so it's we can get it to reverse its direction randomize randomize is really cool It also automatically takes on this really weird sci-fi vibe, which is just brilliant. And we can spread the range, of course. Either together. Or separately. get it to trigger once so like that. 
to have on loop. So that's that one. There's this one. Now we have this one, which is very cool. This gives amplitude. Also change the curve from exponential to logarithmic and linear. So exponential, logarithmic, linear. And again. So before we before we actually uh, start to apply LFO, we'll take a look at the noise section. So <laughs> you have two choices of noise. You have white noise and pink noise. <coughs> pink noise is actually more pleasant for kind of musical purposes. Then you have, I told you what this is. All this is is an impulse response for testing reverbs and stuff. Just sends out a pulse, which you can set up in the settings here. You can have the how many, how wide it is and how loud it is. And all it basically does is it sends out a pulse so you can hear revape uh, tiles and reflections and stuff like that. So anyway, so. So pink noise, we'll leave it on pink because it's just a little bit more pleasant. And then we'll open the modulation for the noise. And then we have different wave shapes. Random. Random's quite nice with the noise as well, actually. Especially if you've got a reverb on it. Sounds really good. And then, so, then we have speed. We have tempo sync. To the host. And then we can change the starting point of the actual uh, envelope here. And what's nice is we can really get good C, C kind of effects and wind effects by modulating this. is very cool it's very nice so they're your basic controls this is the right channel this is the left channel. these are again just for testing purposes because it was basically a test app it comes with tons of cool presets as well but i want to get into the lfos so we can stop that so this like for instance let's start with this one Let's modulate this. Okay, it's super easy to do this in AUM now. It's made life really simple. So we know that our source for our MIDI, if we open this little icon here, we've set our source for Rosetta LFO as the MIDI source for AU uh, JetX. Okay, brilliant. And we know we've got, uh, by default, uh, Rosetta LFO gives us three channels, so we can add as many LFOs as we like because they're AUV3. 
gives us three channels and <coughs> the first one is it defaults to channel CC 13 but we can change that of course we'll leave it on 13 then 15 and then 17 default shape is a sine wave blah 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 we'll, we'll do this in a sec so that's what I'm going to do I am going to this is brilliant right I'm going to tap on this and this these are your exposed parameters for a Gen X. now they're a little bit confusing but that doesn't matter now because what we can do and this is important is you tap this little icon at the top here the one that looks like a little uh, knob with two um, brackets outside it tap on that and what it's tweak any parameter to show its MIDI control so what did I say we wanted to do tweak the speed so I'm just going to move the speed oh oh, oh, oh that, that, that. so all I'm going to do is go okay I'm going to set this to CC 13 which we know is hooked up to Rosetta LFO did I all oh, right okay I'll t I'll, thanks Colin I'll tap it again all right so we know that I'm gonna to have to do this again aren't I all oh, right okay so tap I'm gonna tap it again I'm going to move this and set this to 13 switch it on go done play because Rosetta LFO needs to be running and you see we've now we're now modulating the speed <laughs> Now, if we go into Rosetta LFO, let's do this so we can we can see what's going on, shall we? So, all you need to do is keep an eye on this slider here. We're slowing that down with the rate. Let's set the minimum value uh, at zero. And the maximum at 127 and it'll go all the way but let's set it a bit more a bit more mid-rangey can have it run really really slow which is lovely see how slow it's moving now super slow or oh. faster we can modulate it we can tempo sync it or we can choose a different uh, waveform maybe a or oh. sample and holds nice So there's that one. So next one is 15. Let's see what we can modulate with that. Let's go with say. Let's modulate the frequency just for fun. Again, we can reduce the range of that, of course, with LFO. So, and maybe have that go sample and hold as well. So, it's just going to select random frequencies. Let's switch the noise 
Let's have it. Let's have the LFO uh, modulate this frequency here. So number 17. So again, we just want to go like this, tap this. I want to see it's wobbling. It's waiting for me to move a controller. So I'll move this one. And oh, I think it's 17, isn't it? Now, of course, you can add as many Rosetta LFOs as you like. Now we're modulating. Uh, you can add as many LFOs as you like. Uh, so, like, if you add two, you've got six destina uh, six sources or six destinations, which are tons of destinations, actually, but six sources. And, uh, yeah, you can just carry on adding. And if you have, like, you know, more than one AU Gen X, you can have as many kind of... You can just go nuts. It, it take your time, but it, you'll it'll be, it'll be bonkers. But it'll sound great. Anyway, so... maybe again with this one would be nice to have it on uh, random with some modulation and slower rate not quite as intense and maybe um, we can assign the same LFO to another point as well so let's just just for fun let's assign one of the other lfos maybe one or two to this one um let's see this but we'll use the same lfo we won't bother setting up a second one for time you know so this one and I'm going to use number 13, channel 1, it'll give me a little warning, doesn't matter. And I'm going to increase this one this time. sci-fi now how cool is that
Okay, so <laughs> we'll set up something else for this one. Actually, we'll take them out of the mix and we'll set something else going. So this this time I'm going to set up that kind of a ping thing that I had going on in the first one. So this one, but I wanted to go this. But actually, I'm going to use this. Because I don't want the I don't want the pitch to change. I'm gonna leave it on 440 as well. Or can we can we can we go 220? So we'll go an octave down. And don't oh, don't forget to get your frequency your frequency converter thing you see, which tells you the notes here. And then the frequencies for the different octaves. So there would be 440, which is standard tuning. And this way you can get you you can get all your kind of uh, stuff in AUGEN X to sound to sound really cool and all in tune as well. So I'm going to set, start to slow this down. And it can get very very relaxing, you know. to pink noise switch it on I'm going to reverse this I'm going to set it at 6.470 6 seconds So now they're pinging off at slightly different times. In fact, Specialize it on it, and then we can have the noise hand as well. Guys, thanks very much for joining me this evening where we took a look at AU Gen X and some of the incredible stuff you can do. Soundscapes, drones, your imagination, you know, all you've got to do is play with it, different things, add loads of them in, do some modulation with Rosetta or whatever you like, uh, put uh, tons of effects and stuff on, yeah, and you'll come up with some really, really cool soundscapes and ideas and sci-fi stuff and... It's great for sample fodder as well, you know, so brilliant stuff. Listen, I'm going to let you go, guys. I'm going to play this for a few more minutes, and uh, I hopefully will see you tomorrow with some other bits and pieces. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Strike the like if you're enjoying the video, or subscribe to the channel, consider becoming a patron, and I will see you guys very soon. Ta-da!
Thank mm -hmm. you. 